Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about my research. So I'm really just starting to get to the exciting stuff, uh, which is get I've got some results in and I'm collating um, my results together in some tables and writing up some discussion notes. So I thought I might start to share that with you and put out a bit more um, content on that because it's um, just a topic that is really exciting for me and relevant for so many of us. And um, to introduce my topic, um, it's in the broader area of health communication, health literacy, um, particularly around chronic health conditions. So my project particularly is looking at lay summaries um, and they're basically just short summaries of research articles written in plain everyday language um, for non-technical audiences like us um, to give us an idea of what a research paper is all about. Um, usually just a, a short paragraph about the size of an abstract and um, you don't find them with all research papers but journals um, particularly nowadays um, more and more are writing um, or producing lay summaries of research papers um, to accompany the, the main um, journal article. And for some, it's a mandatory thing that um, when researchers submit their main article, they have to write a lay summary. And for others, it's optional. Or it might only be mandatory for particular types of papers. So you might start to see those, but they're not always called lay summaries. I found, uh, so I'm actually doing a scoping review, um, which is basically a, a very broad review. Um, it's of the guidelines. So when authors write um, a lay summary, say they submit it to a journal, um, and when, or when they submit their research paper, there's a series of guidelines or submission um, guidelines for submitting any sort of paper. Um, and if there's, they have to do a lay summary, there's guidelines to guide them on how the journal wants them to do that. So I'm doing a scoping review on what journals, um, or not just journals, but what journals, um, consumer advocacy groups, professional medical organisations, global health organisations such as the WHO and national funding bodies across five different countries. So Australia, the UK, USA, Canada and New Zealand uh, want out of authors when they submit their work um, for a lay summary or when they're writing a lay summary for their work. Um, and we're looking at that and linking that to the top 10 non-communicable diseases, um, which I won't bore you about the details of that, but most of which are chronic health conditions. So, so things like respiratory diseases, musculoskeletal, cancers, cardiovascular, that sort of thing. So it's a huge project. I've, over the last few months, looked at maybe 500 websites, um, looking to see whether there are guidelines to guide authors for writing lay summaries, um, most of which have come from journals. So just drilling down to see what are the actual recommendations. So an example might be the word count, how long it has to be. Don't use jargon or technical language, um, whether they want a video, all sorts of things. What's the target audience? So, and categorizing them, pulling it out, and because there's no universal list, no universal guidelines. It's all individual, up to the journal, up to the publisher, up to the website. So, we're doing something that's never been done before, pulling out all of these guidelines and seeing what are the common elements and seeing what is there, what isn't there, and it's really interesting. So anyway, it, um, it just got me thinking um, as I'm doing that today. Um, you know, it, it, why it's so important is because it's not always easy to find these summaries. You know, I found 23 different names for lay summaries. Um, and funnily enough, we, we use the term lay summaries, but only three journals actually called these things lay summaries. Um, they're sometimes called highlights, author summaries, key points, key messages, statement of significance. Um, it's really interesting. So I'm just wondering, I'd love to hear from anyone who's read a lay summary or uh, thinks they might have. Um, do any of you guys read research papers uh, regularly? What sort? What motivates you? Um, so I'm planning a consumer um, survey or for, sorry, series of focus groups 
to um, ask people what they want out of a lay summary. And no one's really done that before. Um, back in the 90s, when lay summaries first started appearing in journals, editors just got um, a great, it was a great idea, but they never went to consumers to say, we think this is a big, great idea if we broke down these research papers into lay language to give you a good summary of what this is, but how would you like us to do it? <laughs> they just kind of went and did it. And now, you know, it's kind of evolved and it's all kind of, you know, it's not that easy to, um, to, to sort through and identify, perhaps. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to ask consumers what they would like out of a lay summary. Um, so I'm planning that and putting together a submission for our ethics department at the university at the moment. So that should be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested in, to find out what your thoughts are. Because, you know, what I'm finding in my research is for those of us who have chronic health conditions, um, we're used to going out and looking for information ourselves beyond that which we get from our treating doctors. Um, and the internet is the number one source these days for health information. And it's no wonder there's so much information out there. But you know what actually got me started in doing this research is I found there's so, whilst there's so much information, it's hard to work out what's good, reliable and trustworthy and what isn't. And I found so many people were struggling with that issue. So I thought, why don't I, and, and I was uh, in Facebook groups and that sort of thing and trying to steer people around that concept of, you know, the plethora of misinformation and getting frustrated. thought, why don't I do something with this and get a degree out of it? So here I am. Um, and it's, it's so important because there, it, it can be really hard to work out. So lay summaries. That's why I'm so excited about lay summaries because they're written by the researcher themselves. So they're a great um, source of good health information. But are they doing their job? So anyway, I'm guessing it's pretty passionate. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of introduce the topic, my research, finding out if anyone has any thoughts or uh, feedback on that and just start the conversation basically, and also interested to hear about where you guys go for your health information. Is it the internet? If so, what sort of sites in particular um, do you find useful? Or is it more just a Google search using keywords, that sort of thing? No right or wrong answers. I'm just, I'm just interested. Um, so yeah, please put something in the comments. Um, and I'd, yeah, really love to hear any thoughts. So um, back to work, I guess. And I'll talk to you soon and uh, keep sharing some results. Okay, bye for now.